West Virginia has a guy, and it's not Mark Byington. It's Darian DeVries, former coach from the Drake Bulldogs. Paul and I are here to react about it. We're excited to do this show. We've kind of been preparing to do this show all day. I actually thought we'd be doing it a couple hours ago, to be honest. Uh, the news broke a little later than we anticipated, but the first to break the news uh, officially, publicly, was to, uh, ESPN, and I have that article ready to share in just a moment. But others behind the scenes have been on top of this story from the get-go. Uh, that includes Burt Rivals, but I'll let Paul talk about that more in a minute. But uh, the news did break from Mr. Pete Thamel that West Virginia will hire DeVries as their 93rd men's basketball coach of the Mountain. Paul, what are your thoughts on it, man? It's a great hire. It's a slam dunk. It's, a, it's not completely out of the park kind of hire. This guy, it's 150 and 50 ish, right? He wins a lot of basketball games. He took a program that had only been to one NCAA tournament since the 70s and has, if not for COVID, but taken them to four NCAA tournaments. And we're not talking about this is not a upper, what you would consider an upper mid major, like, um, you know, you look at teams like Creighton. You know, teams like that, that they're mid-major, but they're considered like upper level. No, this is Drake. This is a this is a program that falls around like the Bucknell level, you know. And those teams usually they go and they have spurts between appearances. Usually, you know, they'll go, they'll miss a year, or they'll get hot for a couple of years. Um, but in this case, he's had them ready to go. They've won twenty-four or more games all but one year. And so he's averaging almost 25 wins a year. So it's pretty easy to scale what he does up, and he does do a five-out type motion offense. And there are videos of him teaching it on the Internet. If you'd like to watch that and see his teaching style, how he does things, certainly is an offensively gifted coach and in, in, in what they call a technician. So I'm extremely excited about this. And, yes, I'm glad Coos mentioned it in the intro. I have been telling you guys, because the guys at Rivals have been saying for over a week, well, about a week, let's say, maybe three or four days, that this was the hire. Um, other people chose to straddle the fence. I understand that because even the way things were born today, I even got nervous a little bit. i got to stop um, you a second. got to stop you a second. Your mic is popping terribly. I thought it was me, but it's not. Is there anything you can do to fix it? No. Okay, we're gonna have to do something because it's it's extra. Uh, I think the people in the chat are having a hard time with it, and I'm I'm having a hard time with it. So it's only ever happens when we go double live for some reason. Yes, it's, it's, it's first time I know what's happened. Honestly. Sorry about this, guys. It's beauty of being live, man. Things like this happen. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why I went ahead and stopped it, Browns and Beers. I, I would rather just go ahead and uh, – I would rather just go ahead and start over <laughs> than have that continue through the show. But uh, but it's a big it's a big story, guys. We're all excited. Uh, I personally think this is a great hire. Uh, he was, you know – once I found out it was kind of down to him and Byington and a couple of the guys, he was at the top of the list for me. Uh, I really like his resume. Uh, I really like which we'll get to in a minute, but I, you know, there's a good chance his son could come with him, which I'm excited about. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a great hire. We're really excited about it. And I think, uh, Ren Baker did a great job making this hire. He didn't rush, make any rash decisions. Uh, he took his time, but got a guy that was available and took it. All right. Try again, Paul. Do I sound – am I still crackling? Everybody let me know because I don't want to get off on a tangent and uh, something be wrong here. So, you all let me know real quick in the comments if I sound better. It's the same. That, it's the same? They're saying yes. It's still crackling. 
Let me try something here. I, I tried editing. I tried muting myself, and it didn't do any good. So, uh, automatically adjust. Now try it again. Show killer. No, it ain't. Keep going. Still, still, uh, still crackling. I don't have a cord, guys. It's it's wireless. I, I've already turned them off. Turned them back on. Uh, just do your best, man. Let's just roll with it. There's no we can do about it at this point. Well, I mean, I've got I've got that microphone in there, but but I can't use it with you when you're on no, here. The then, then you won't be able to hear me. It's a little better so, than it was. So keep going. Right. It's better a little. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's sorry about this, y'all. But um, so I, I, what I was getting to is the guys over at Rivals deserve a ton of credit. Um, I've been wanting to say that all day long. They they were on top of this for almost a week, and and I'm talking about Vernon Bailey and Keenan Cummings. Uh, they both have been instrumental for me as far as the info that I've gotten to know about this basically for a couple of days now, or at least feel really good about it. I don't think anybody can know about this this early on or this far out from a hire, but they did. <laughs> And look, like uh, other people chose to kind of play it safe, what I would consider safe. Uh, and, and these guys, and Vernon, those guys really went after it and said who they thought it was going to be. And they felt like it was going to be DeVries for a while now. So I, I'm extremely proud to say that and uh, proud of those guys and wanted to give them their credit. So with that said, there's more to it than just DeVries coming along, obviously. Uh, a lot of speculation about his son, Coos, uh, which Jeff Goodman put out a tweet. Do you have that? I know we didn't talk about it. Sorry, I was on mute. I'm, I don't yeah. have the Jeff Goodman tweet, but I do have another tweet, and I'm going to share it right okay. now. So I, I came – I figured it would come up. So here it is. It's from NBA Draft Point. Can everybody see that? Paul, can you see it? It's a little small, yeah. isn't it? Uh, anyway, I can see it. Uh, let me uh, enlarge the screen here. That might be a little better. Um, I'll make it full screen. That'll be better. This is uh, – that didn't – actually, I took the tweet away. It says, per sources, Tucker DeVries is following his father to West Virginia. Huge pickup for the Mountaineers, gaining not only a great coach, but potential All-American candidate for next year. Big shooting wing who could get some real NBA buzz next year. And here are his highlights. I'm going to play these highlights for you guys real quick. From This is from the NBA draft Ooh. point. What? Nothing. I just worry something? about highlights. I, I worry yeah. when it comes to highlights. Well, you guys, I'll let you guys watch it for yourself. It's over at NBA draft point uh, on X. Sometimes the uh, copyright folks don't like it when you play the highlights. So we, we'll skip the highlights. But, yeah. Go check it out on X, NBA Draft Point. Uh, good call, Paul. Um, so we're real excited about Tucker coming. Apparently he's coming. At least that's what the sources are saying. And I, I yeah. pulled up his I pulled up his uh, his profile on ESPN. He's six foot seven. He's a six foot seven wing. So he's very tall, has a lot of length, 210 pounds. He averaged this season, averaged 21.6 a game. Averaged 6.7 rebounds a game to go along with that and shot 44.4% from the floor. He shot 36% from three, 81% from the free throw free throw line. Uh, just a really, really good player. Uh, and he's averaged throughout his career, he averaged 13.9 as a freshman, 18.6 as a sophomore, and then this year the 21.6 that I mentioned as a junior. So if he comes with his dad – He's an he's automatically one of the top players in the Big Twelve Conference preseason going into the season, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and don't forget, guys, this isn't some kid that nobody knew about. Everybody wanted him. This is a top one hundred and fifty player. He was a four star recruit. Uh, just so happens his dad was at Drake, and he, so it, it, there's only one thing that worries me. And this was also something that came up on the rivals board. Um, his girlfriend plays softball at Drake, and she is extremely beautiful woman. 
So uh, everybody knows that when it comes to that, that's undefeated, right? So uh, worry about that a little bit. That means that, you know, and unfortunately we don't play softball at West Virginia, but I highly doubt he would let that get in the way of his career. Moving up to the Big 12 and be able to show himself on the, on that level, uh, in my opinion, is probably going to outweigh the one year away from his girl. Um, so, and it's his dad. You're, you know, that's just something you, if you pass up on that, man, it's, I have a question, your decision-making skills. Um, although it, maybe he would want, you know, some people have speculated maybe he might want to stay at Drake. I highly doubt that. Jeff Goodman is already tweeting, who's the guy that's extremely in the know on this stuff, that he's probably going with him too. Yeah. Uh, James Blankenship says it's time for softball in Motown. <laughs> Hey, uh, Kenny Evans leaves us a $5 super chat. Kenny, uh, thank you, my man, for the oh, support. I'm sorry, Kenny. Uh, he says, well, that's okay. He just dropped it a few, a couple minutes ago. He says, how is he at recruiting and retaining great players? Can you answer that one? Because you follow him closely, yeah. closely than I have. So he's done a really good job of finding Division II type talent in the, in the, in the portal. And, and identifying that for what he did at Drake. The guard at and right is a really good player that he brought in as a transfer. I think he was – I'm not as up to speed on this as I should be because we had, we got on here so quickly, guys, so forgive me. Um, but at and right was a transfer. I'm just not sure exactly where from. Uh, I believe it was – I believe it was Division Two or JUCO, but – uh, that's another, by the way, he'll be coming hopefully with, with the breeze and he would be another high level guard, uh, similar to think of Joe Toussaint type player on, uh, and that's kind of what you're getting with at right, except better on offense. Um, so, you know, he lit Washington state up for 20 the other night. If you watch that game, he was the best player on the floor for Drake. So really exciting, uh, guard situation coming in here from Drake at retaining players. He's been incredible. That, that whole squad just came back this year uh, that won all those games last year for Drake and they won another conference or almost won another conference title. So, or did they win the conference title? They did. Yes, they did win the conference title. Um, so they won another conference title this year. So um, in my opinion, you know, just based on that. And then obviously when you get to West Virginia, you've got NIL resources. You're going to have a shot at scaling that up. He's going to have to scale it up. You saw how the Washington Washington State team outmatched his team physically. You would guess that he's going to be able to take what he does and scale it up at a, at a larger level at West Virginia. You know, we're going to be really interesting. It's going to be such a fun few days to hear the press conference, to hear his vision talk about the style of ball they play, uh, difference of things like that. Uh, if you're talking about scheme, Simo, uh, I would compare him to probably Josh Schertz over at Indiana State. Oh, here we got another super chat. But a very offensively gifted technician. And what he, he runs like what you call – similar like a five out. Who did you say he was similar to? I, I missed that part. Sure, Josh Schertz, Indiana State, similar to that. Gotcha. Thank you, Sasquatch304, my favorite name on YouTube. He says, cheers <laughs> to the start of a new era and drops a $20 super chat. Sasquatch, thank you for the generosity, my man. Much appreciated. Sasquatch is always good to us here on the channel. Uh, can't thank you enough for the support. Uh, and, guys, I think I got the sound problem figured out. You guys let me know. Uh, I'm not getting any feedback anymore. So, hopefully, that whatever I did and I was tinkering around with it uh, as he was talking, I think I got it fixed. But, anyway. Uh, Tosh says he hopes he sees value in Jay Coons. I think Jay's out, guys. I don't think Jay's going to be at West. He's already dropped a letter saying goodbye. I'm pretty yeah. sure he's out, uh, but I could be wrong. Never, people can always change their mind. Um, Browns and Beer says he likes the ability to like Super Chats now. That's awesome. I didn't even know that was the thing. That's cool. Huh. Guys, we got we got 230 people in 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 the, on this chat right now on this stream. Thanks to everyone for jumping on, whether you're on YouTube or on X. We thank you for coming on. And uh, be sure if you're on X now, if you want to see the rest of our content, come check us out on YouTube. 
And don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe as well to the channel. And again, if you want to make sure we see your comment because it's impossible to see them all, you drop that super chat just like Sasquatch did and just like Kenny Evans did earlier. Drop, hit the dollar sign near the chat box, leave your comment. It'll highlight it. We'll put it on the screen and read it. Uh, what's up, John Christophic? Thanks for hopping in. Matthew Swanson. Not going to try to read off everybody. We thank everybody for hopping in with us. Um, I wanted to, I have, I still haven't got to the point where I shared the article from ESPN, but I'm going to do that now. Um, uh, this was the first, again, this was the first outlet to drop the story publicly. It says West Virginia is set to hire Drake's Darian DeVries as its next men's basketball coach. Sources told ESPN on Sunday, the agreement is expected to be for five years. Sources said DeVries has emerged as one of the country's top men, major coaches in recent years, leading Drake to the NCAA tournament in three of the past four seasons. He's won at least 25 games in each of the last four seasons and has a record of 150 and 55 over those six seasons. DeVries takes the vacancy created, goes on to talk about the Huggins and Eilert situation. We know what happened. Uh, his experience includes 17 seasons as an, as an assistant at Creighton and 20 total seasons on staff with the Blue Jays. His time there included working for both Dana Altman and Greg McDermott, two awesome, awesome coaches. So he has he's learned from two of the best. DeVries takes over a WVU program that went uh, we we know the record. Don't need to don't need to go go there. It says he enters the job with both NCAA tournament expectations and amid a Big Twelve that's been consistently the most challenging in the sport in recent seasons. The immediate questions after DeVries hiring will be whether his son Tucker DeVries, which we just addressed, will go with him. DeVries, a six foot seven guard, averaged twenty one point six a game, eighteen point six last year. He scored eighteen hundred sixty seven points in his career and will be considered among the best players in the country next season. Drake won a first four game in 2021, lost in the first round of Miami in 23, and Washington State this year. They won the Missouri Valley regular season title in DeVries' first season. So that's Before we go any further, guys, yeah. our sponsor, Dutch Miller, need to give them a shout-out. Absolutely. While we've got 250 of you guys in here, appreciate all the support, guys. Give us 30 seconds to break just for sponsor. This episode of Hoops from the Hills is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com, or you can come in person today to the home of friends and family pricing, only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. Near you. Thank, thanks for that. Thanks for that, guys, for being patient. Let us get through that. We ha always have to give a shout-out to our sponsor, uh, Chris Miller, and the fine folks over at Dutch Miller Automotive. Uh, they've been good to us here on, on this channel and our and our football channels as well, so I have to have to give them a shout-out. But uh, – so. WV Metro News came out with a good article. I'm not going to read the whole article, guys. It basically says a lot of the same things. I just read it. To talk, you know, he is 47 years old, so he's young, has a long future ahead of him. Uh, one of the things some people have been concerned about, Paul, and I'll get your thoughts on this, is him being an Iowa guy. He, he went to northern Iowa uh -huh. and has spent his entire yeah. career in the state or in the Midwest at least. Mm -hmm. Should we be concerned if the Iowa job ever comes open that he might leave? Well, I think we may get lucky because there's a lot of speculation the Iowa job may come open this year, and it would be very unlikely. I mean, it's possible that he would take this job today and jump to Iowa next week. It would be a dirtbag move. It would leave us in a really bad spot. Uh, from what I've heard, he's not that kind of guy. He's a very loyal guy. As a matter of fact, he's only had two jobs, right? That's the big thing about him. He was at Creighton for almost, what, 20 years, close to it, and now he's been here at Drake. And guys, he's won several conference several conference championships. Has been to four. People were mm -hmm. people were looking at Bynes, and he got to one. You know. Yeah. This guy's been to four yeah. NCAA tournaments. He's had he's had offers before this turned down a ton. It's public knowledge. So, I say that to say that yes, I was a threat. I think they'll always be the one threat. Possibly Nebraska, that area. Creighton. Creighton. I don't Maybe. think that's you're, you're moving down at that point. But I mean, 
Are you? Although, Big East? Yeah, but most people will consider that to be moving down, yeah. It's the Big 12 versus the Big East. But, I mean, I get what you're saying. Um, I, I, I don't, you know, maybe. You know, it's possible. He would probably be the front runner for that, too. But uh, it really all depends on the situation. I mean, if he's if he's winning, you know, let's see how he does here. If you're winning big here, what's the reason to leave, you know? So um, one thing I wanted to pop up here really quick, guys, is speaking of the McDermott, McDermott coaching tree, this is something that I got off the Rivals board, WV Sports. I screenshotted this a couple of days ago. Look at this coaching tree from, from McDermott. Eric Henderson, one of the summit tourney in regular season. TJ Alselberger, also a, that's a big name from him, won the Big 12 tournament. Steve Lutz won the Conference USA tournament. Darian DeVries won the Mount Missouri Valence Conference tourney, tournament. Uh, what's that name there, Coos? It's getting small on me here. Alan Huss won the Big South regular season, and Patrick Sellers won yeah. the Northeast regular season. You got it. So you're talking about a guy that knows how to select elite coaching. And, and so that is that is a track record of success out of a coaching tree. And we know across all sports that matters. You look at you look at the Andy Reid coaching tree and what it's doing right now. You look at the Shanahan coaching tree and how it looks. Uh, and you can you know, also on some, you can go look at the Loops coaching tree from Arizona. Bunch of guys, the Bob Huggins coaching tree. Coaching trees matter. Because a lot of times when you're a big, successful coach, you get the best assistance, right? The guy, I mean, a lot of times it's the guy like, a lot of people think Ben McCollum should be a high-level assistant coach next instead of a, possibly a head coach. But uh, because that's how it used to be, guys like him would get the next big assistant job. Right. Anyway, to me, that's a good track. You know, that's a good thing, right? I mean, how can we not be excited about a guy who's a, amongst a group of champions like that? So, right. uh, got to address this super chat real quick. Uh, Ocho 85, uh, there's a 999 super chat. He says, How much is the deal? That hasn't been released yet, Ocho. We expect to know more. I think Thursday they're supposed to have an, uh, an official press conference about it. So, we're gonna have probably gonna have to wait a few. I'm, it may leak out before that, but right now the details have not been confirmed other than it's a, supposedly a five year deal. That's all we know at this point. But it's a great question, and it's a question most people are going to want to know. The answer to. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Did Paul. we did we read this one, Coos, or did I miss it? No, we did not. We missed it. Thank you, okay. Daniel. Sorry for missing it, my man. How much money is in this country roads trust? Rumor was three million for basketball. Well, I'm not sure. I never did hear of I never did hear a firm number. Maybe Paul did. I never did hear a firm number. I, all I heard was that we were in the top half, if not top third of the big 12 and that it was good. But I've also heard that a lot of that was because of Huggins, but we'll see. Yeah. So the, the, the rumor is that all the reason Derry DeVries is the guy is because all the donors got on board with him. That, that, that's been the prevailing what's leaked out that all the donors are really happy with this hire. Time will tell. Mm -hmm. I, I do know that some were pulling for buying to, but for the most part, they're all happy with either which one would, would have worked out. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think DeVries has done it, has sustained excellence longer. Uh, and I also like the way that he, he, he plays offense better just a little bit. Uh, I love the passing by his teams. But anyway, uh, so, yes, I think the donors are happy with this hire, guys. And he's going to, you know, think about it. He's already got a leg up. Because he's going to be bringing kids from Drake, almost assuredly at least to probably more, that can help with this transition, that are really good players, good enough to make it to the NCAA tournament, and push a Washington State team to the brink that most think should have won the Pac-12. So we're talking about high-level players coming along with them here. I, I think it's going to be a smooth transition, especially if a guy like Kirk Creases sticks around. Somebody did ask that question, and uh, I, I was looking at – I just wanted to make sure I could think of everyone, Coos. Uh, so if you're looking at the roster, probably Seth Wilson. Um, maybe – I doubt to go to Tuglo and Nelson will be back. Uh, he'll probably just stick to football after this year, but who knows. Pat Subinick is a guy I would keep an eye on. 
Quinn Slazinski is a guy that uh, is trying for this medical red shirt. If he gets it, he's definitely a wild card. Uh, Ali Ragab is probably out. I, I mean, I don't know any of this, but I'm assuming he, he was only here for Yeah. yeah. Uh, Offrey Nove, as long as he had not tramper, has got a ton of eligibility left. Kirk Reese has got a year. Kobe Johnson's got, I think, two years. Josiah Harris has three years, I think, or two years. Uh, no, no Farrakhan. People say he has an extra year. He does. And <clears throat> Jeremiah Benbury is another guy that has a lot of time. So there are names. It'll be interesting to see what happens with all these guys. In this day and age, you know, guys can walk in and say, hey, we need you to move on. Hey, you're not going to work out for us. I mean, that's just the kind of land this is. So yep. time will tell. Yep. We're going to have some transfers out. Sure. I mean, shot sure. not to see it. But there's also going to be some transfers in, so it'll, it'll level it, even itself out. Tanner right. Tracks Premier, and let's be honest. I mean, I don't want to be too negative here, but they went 9-23. and 23. <laughs> So, I, I mean – Having some transfers out may not – and and a lot of the guys may not fit what he wants to do. So, Tanner Tracks Premier, thank you for the $5. He left a donation. Uh, there was no comment with that, but he did leave a comment up earlier in the chat that I'll read. It says, the women's b-ball team is on the eve of one of the most important games in its history. Great point. Rian Baker knocked it out of the park with the hiring of Coach DeVries. Great day to be a Mountaineer fan. Great comment. Got to give the ladies a shout out. They went in. They were down down at halftime yesterday. Come out in the second half. Played absolutely phenomenal defense to pull ahead of of uh, Princeton yesterday and not look back. You know, winning that game and a very very critical game. There's going to be a lot of eyeballs watching this West Virginia women's team against Iowa tomorrow night. And and Caitlin Clark, I'll be one of them. I can't wait to watch this game. So it'll be very Same, exciting man. to watch the women play against. Arguably the greatest women's basketball college basketball player ever, or at least definitely one of them. Maybe yeah. one of the greatest yeah. college basketball players ever in general, men or women. You can make that argument. She is the leading scorer of all time. So she's got some Steph Curry to her, no doubt. You know, and, and I think her best years are ahead of her, uh, especially in the NBA when there's a lot more space and she's going to have a lot more um, offense run for her. You know, not more offense run for her, but better offense run for her, more mm -hmm. efficient. So It'll be interesting to see what she really does. It, you know, maybe we'll look up and see she's broken some of Donna and Tarazi's record someday. Yeah. Um, people are asking about the Drake staff. This staff is all pretty much new. It's all been on. The, it's been there since 2022. So it's hard to say, you know, so it goes to say basically he can start over with, excuse me, with staff. More than likely, he's probably going to want to go back in and possibly bring in some high-level guys from elsewhere that he knows as well. I, I think, you know, but uh, whoever he thinks can get the kids is who he'll bring. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, snow Lord, 1999. Thank you for the super chat. He says, he no paid more for it. No more. Bring <laughs> back Huggins comments. Question mark. <laughs> well, I hate to break it to you. Snow Lord, but you know, there are some fans out there who just aren't going to be able to help themselves, <laughs> especially on Facebook. I don't know how many you, you are on Facebook, but I've never seen so many pro Huggins people on Facebook than on Facebook. I mean, you go over there, man. That, it's it's brutal. But anyway, got to read this. I got those. Matthew, Matthew Watkins. <laughs> this is to you. We had a good post game live after the girls' <laughs> game. Imagine leaving us hanging for something like family. Ha ha. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate it, my man. Thank you for supporting my guy Paul while I was gone. Uh, I knew you were kidding, man. I knew you were. Uh, got to visit some some family that we don't see that that often, so it was nice to get away for a day and uh, spend some time with family. Really enjoyed it. <laughs> Big Aaron. <laughs> what do you say? Facebook is a bunch of dumb boomers. Probably a lot of boomers in this chat, Aaron. You may want to be careful. Uh, but I did think I still thought it was a little comical. Um, any chance Huggins takes a Louisville job? I, I think that was a rumor. I don't think Huggins. I don't think Louisville's interested in Bob Huggins personally. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see it. Um, what do you think, Paul? No chance. It'd, it'd be shocking to be honest, guys. Not that he's not capable of doing it for one or two years, three. You know, uh, with his health trending upwards, from what we understand. But 
the way they lost out on Dusty May, <laughs> I'm just telling you, it, it, I mean, they're they're gonna they're gonna get somebody they want this cycle. Whether it's the Drew, maybe it's Drew from Grand Canyon. If he wins tonight, maybe he becomes their favorite. Um, th they're gonna find somebody that can be splashy before it's over with. And the thing is, is they've got a huge pool of NIL money waiting. Very, very unstable, unstable conference situation. And I think that's the big turnoff for them right now is there's just a lot of instability and chaos, you know, going around specifically with Louisville right now. Yeah. And you look how Chris Mack left. You know, that was a, just a really ugly situation. The Kenny Payne thing was weird, how it came about, too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's they've lost a lot of ground. I, I think, you know, Scott Drew definitely could have turned that around for him. They didn't get him. Uh, let's see what direction they go next. I don't think Huggins on the, on the tail end of this controversy is the higher for them. Agreed. Uh, I, somehow or another, we missed his super chat from earlier. John Waffle H2P, who always. Oh, I thought you read it. No, who always Sorry. loves to throw shade our way, says he's using you for the Iowa job. Just saying. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean it'd be make no sense, to be honest. They yeah, play I mean, tonight. If they lose tonight, he yeah. could have had that job. If, if Obviously, they, have, they must know something. You know what I'm saying, dude? Like, yeah. McCaffrey has told somebody or they've told somebody he's not retiring or he's not being fired, you know, or both. Um, or he's not a top candidate for the job. If it happens, maybe they have a higher aim. So, you know, DeVries, that's a, that'd be a really calculating type of decision to make. Do you hold out for Iowa? Maybe a dream job uh, closer to home and miss West Virginia because that's what would have happened. Yeah. There was no way Rebecca was going to wait another day or two on anything. I doubt. Right. You know, Byington sitting right there, he could have just hired him probably. So, I mean, you know, but stranger things have happened. And, and maybe if, you know, maybe Iowa couldn't pull him away. I, it's definitely early enough for something crazy like that to happen, but it would leave us in a, it'd be like what happened with Huggins all over again, almost, but worse in a lot of ways. Yeah, I don't think I don't think he's going to leave it behind an opportunity like West Virginia for something that may or may not even happen. I mean, that's a huge risk to take. That's the point. Yeah, that's you know? kind of the point there. Samuel's uh, saying this is a five-year deal. Yep. I don't know if we I don't know if we covered that or yet not. We did. Am I read I it. It was in the article I read. Okay. I've been trying to multitask this whole time. I, I get it. No, we're we're, we're looking um, for updates. I was going to share, and I, I forgot to do this. I was going to share the actual uh, announcement from the school. That's the Goodman tweet. Calls him. He said, uh, he, he said, he's talking about Tucker DeVries. He mm -hmm. uh, says, the source told Field of 68 that he will be following his dad. He said, it's a huge way to start building the team with a senior NBA prospect who has gone to a pair of NCAA tournaments. Right. Absolutely, it is. Absolutely, it is. Um, here's the announcement from the WV men's basketball. It says, a new era of Mountaineer basketball is here. We're thrilled to announce Darren DeVries as the 23rd head coach in program history. And there's a picture of DeVries. Man, he just – it looks natural, does it not? He just looks like it a West does. Virginia. He does. Men's basketball I'll eventually say his college. last name right. I know it's DeVries, but I keep calling him DeVries. <laughs> it's all right, man. We'll forgive you this once. You might have to forgive me again. That's all right. <laughs> Don't Kenny forget to Evans. like the video, guys. Yep. Yep. Like, share, comment. Even whether even if you're watching this on the playback, please like the like it for us. It still helps that algorithm, gets it out to more people. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel here and also our football channels, uh, Mountaineer Paul Talks Football and uh, Goose's Corner. Got a super. You keep. I'm trying to put a super chat up, man. There it is. We I may be good. Same time as you. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You were putting it up. I was taking it down. I was putting it up. You were taking it down. I just went back and forth. <laughs> Kenny Evans says, we may be good in football and basketball now. Let's hope so, man. First time in a little back, while. Get back to the glory days of West Virginia sports, man. Baseball teams seems to be doing okay. They had a big series win over the weekend over a number 17 ranked team. 
How about that, Paul? They get no hit on Friday night. And then the double header sweep. And then a double header <laughs> sweep the next day. Yeah. What a turnaround. Yeah. Without their two best players, by the way. Yep. So, you know, what's going cool? I mean, and then listen, they're hanging above 500, you know, what, five, six games now. Uh, I think, what are they, 14 and nine now? 14 and 10, something like that. Um, so, you know, God, man, we paid that guy. We need him back. Uh, well, Ken, Ken, Ken Kendrick paid him most likely. Right. So, uh, Steve says Clemson's going to beat Baylor and Scott Drew ends up at Kentucky. Maybe. Clemson has upset Baylor. Unbelievable. Big 12 not looking too good today, are they? Browns and Beer says, hottest take. If FAU wanted to keep their strong basketball brand going, Huggins for two to three years could be fun. They were willing to hire Herman after his controversies. That's an interesting take. Uh, and, David, we do not know yeah. the terms of the deal. The only thing that's been released, at least so far, is the five years. That's it. We will know more probably over the, you know, in the coming days. It is a public university, so that stuff will get released. So I can tell soon. you that that Ren, uh, it, it, at least what was told to me from a source was that Ren wanted to spend in the $3 million range. So don't be surprised if that's right about where it's at. I wouldn't even be surprised. I wouldn't even be surprised if we got him for less than that. Honestly. I just know, I just know that's what he's, what he was willing to spend. Agreed. Agreed. I heard the same thing, uh, Paul, uh, y- you know, and that's, you and I talked about that, I think, but yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm sure they'll pay him less if they can. But the pro- thing with DeVries is he's probably – I'm sure West Virginia wasn't the only school that was after him, so they probably had to up the ante a little bit. Yeah, he had, he had a lot of leverage here. Man. It was probably going to be hard to get him for less than three, if I had to guess. But he lost them with the May decision. <laughs> you know, true. May going to Michigan lost him some leverage. Yeah, Because well, Louisville true. wasn't interested. Louisville's not interested in him. Well, the, we were hearing – you know, we, we, we kept hearing he was the number one guy for Michigan. You know, that was right. And I, and I and I said for two days that he wasn't that, you know, he wasn't the guy from Michigan. I've got actually a screenshot of just that that I've saved because so many people said that over the course right. of the last couple of days. And somebody I respect said no. He was told by two people at the top of Michigan's program that he was not actually a candidate for the job, you know. Right. So, uh, not that I'm, you weren't arguing that, obviously, but uh, there are people that I was battling right. with earlier. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. Uh, Snow Lord 90, 1999, thank you for the Super 499 Super Chat. He says, did you hear – Or I'm sorry, did you see that Oklahoma State fan – yeah, I was debating with this guy. Did you see that Oklahoma State fan saying how Oklahoma State is the better job? Acting gets bad how W you got a coach over them. W's but all. Oh. Yeah, I, I think it's the same guy. Yeah, I was debating that guy a little bit. I mean, I, I all I said was, "Hey, you're not giving WVU enough credit here." Basically, uh, some others, some other WVU fans took it further than that. Uh, I I think the two jobs are pretty close to being even, to be honest. Uh, I, I think Western is probably a little better job, but I'm also a little biased, so I didn't want. I was trying to keep my bias out of the conversation, but well, they're both good jobs. But I didn't. I don't right. think Oklahoma State's head and shoulders above West Virginia like this guy was acting like it was. Yeah, and he he kept We're throwing talking up, about. Yeah, he kept throwing up Marcus Smart and uh, Cade Cunningham. I'm like, two players don't make a program, you know. Not at all. Not at all. And I how mean, many guys you put in the NBA don't win? It don't it doesn't dictate how many games you won either. No, and it, I mean it, it's a factor, but like. If you're going to go by that, man, there's there, there's a lot of teams in the Big Twelve that are door for both our programs and the NBA prospects. It's, uh, you know, and really, if you want to go that route, we can get Javon Carter and uh, Deuce McBride. You know, I mean, we've got our share of guys in the league too. Um, maybe not at the same level as the Kate Cunningham, but still, or, or Marcus Smart. He's had a good career, but but Kate Cunningham only came there because his brother was on the staff. So I mean, right. is is I think you got to take that into consider consideration too. He probably wouldn't have went there otherwise. Uh, with all due respect to Oklahoma State, they're not getting a whole lot of lottery picks. 
at a high school, just like West Virginia's not, you know. Um, that all changes today, baby. Maybe Tucker DeVries is coming along. He's listen, we've yeah. already got one on the way, hopefully. Maybe. OTW. Uh, let's see, John Kristoffick says he don't think Darren DeVries will leave for Iowa. Yeah, Baylor. John, I, I, had, I had better going a long way too, Daniel. Daniel says that he lost the Final Four team today with Baylor losing. Uh, and John, you said it was Byington for days now, bud. You gonna admit you was wrong? John did. Yeah, I'm just giving him a hard time. Uh, somebody said, "Let me find that comment again." Uh, I agree, Curtis. I thought May was overrated as well. I, I I didn't. I never understood the buzz around the. I mean, I get it. He's a good coach. You can't take FAU to a Final Four without being a good coach. But he had the exact same roster this year. Barely got in the Not tournament. exact. They, they did lose a couple of players. But, yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. They're five, they had five starters back, didn't they? Uh, I'm pretty sure they lost one of their starters. But, anyway. Go yeah, every, everything I've read about him said they had everybody back. I, so I, I don't, maybe they were using everybody as a general term. I don't know. But I took it for, I took it for face value. But, anyway, uh, nonetheless – he had a majority of the team back that went to the final four last year and barely got in. But anyway, uh, I actually prefer, honestly, and I know I might, it might sound like I'm just saying this cause it happened, but I actually prefer DeVries over may. I know that might sound crazy, but I did. Um, I thought, I thought the May thing was overhyped. Uh, let me see. Oh, connections to recruiting around here. Tosh Miller asked, does he have any connections to recruiting? around here. I'm not sure, Tosh, what his connections, the, if he would have any connections. Ohio is a place that West Virginia's always recruited well. I'm not sure if he has any connections there. But my, Paul, do you know? I don't know his recruiting area, to be honest, guys. What This will be stuff that comes out in later episodes of the show. Um, I didn't want to dig too deep on, on DeVries because you just never know until, you, until it's over with, right? So I did some, you know, we went skin deep on a lot of this. Um, but we'll, you know, that's what subsequent episodes are all about. I will have more info for you. Um, I, I mean, I'm obviously he's in the Iowa that area. Uh, the Marquette, he's, you know, he's been, he's he has to contend with like the Marquette, Wisconsin, Creighton's of the world, St. Louis. Um, so you know, there, there's a lot of good basketball players out that way. Listen, if our if our trajectory, because we're the Big Twelve guys. You can sell those guys where he recruits at playing out their way. They'll be playing on the road six games a year. Well, in football, <laughs> football head, uh, several games a year in front of their family or close to home a lot of times, right? So, I mean, I think you could get that sell off. John, I was truly just kidding, man, but I appreciate you saying that. Um, you know, and in the day of the transfer portal, I just read this yesterday, and it's like, duh. You know, in this day and age of the transfer portal, regionality is kind of gone, you know, because it's if you got the money, somebody will come from Timbuk too. It really don't matter, man. Yep. Agreed. Daniel Sargent said the actual pronunciation of his last name, according to Tony Caridi, is DeFreeze. So it's an F instead. You know, I thought when I was watching the highlights of Tucker, I thought it sounded like he was saying the F sound instead of the V sound. So maybe I guess I'll trust I've been, Tony on that. <laughs> yeah. Consider they're probably doing an episode. Guy. Yeah. They are doing it. Actually. I heard, uh, I okay. saw him put it on his Twitter account. Hopefully we're not competing right. against those guys. <laughs> uh, we're not doing too bad if that's the case. No, we're not. We're not. I'm, I was being tongue in cheek, but, uh, let's see. Glad we got the top ground on radar. Wish Jesse had another year. He's going to win. A, he's going to win at Michigan, though. He may. We'll see. Michigan's not an easy place to win at, uh, but we'll see how he does. Um, he'll probably come in and be top half of Big Ten immediately. Talking about Dusty May. Stephen I agree Castillo. with that, Litzel. Uh Stephen Castillo says never been to Iowa. All I know is cornfields from Fields of Dreams. Hopefully, he and his family grow up to love wild and wonderful. And I think he will. I think he will. Um, you know, and Ryan being a Midwest guy himself. From Oklahoma, probably uh, able to sell that a little, little bit in common, you know. 
Um, I'm not sure who, who he keeps on staff, if anybody, Josh. That's a great question. Uh, my what person, was he I asking about? If if he if we think he keeps anybody on staff, I'm, I personally don't think he will. I look forward <coughs> to bringing his, I, I look forward to bringing his, a whole new staff that he's comfortable with and knows. Maybe even him, he may even bring his his Drake staff with him. You know, I don't know. We got a super chat from Jacob Yoho. He says, "Is he going to let the alumni come back?" Uh, I'm not sure. I, I hope so. I don't even, I don't know why he wouldn't. I, I mean, look. If you're talking about like, listen, Patrick Subinick has value. No doubt Kirk Carissa has value. Um, no Farrakhan to me has value, especially in a guy like DeFree's system. Um, and other guys too. Kobe, like Kuz mentioned Kobe yesterday. Great defender. Uh, Josiah Harris is like, he's okay at a lot of things, but like, is he somebody you want to keep around if you can get better players? Probably not. Same with Kobe, really. I hate to say this stuff because they've been around us for so long, man. It's like it kills me to even talk negatively about these guys. But but at the same time, we have to be realistic about what it, what this all is going to probably look like. It's similar to the GM that inherits the head coach, right? <laughs> you know, he wants his own guy. Uh, the coaching staff at DeVries is yeah, – DeVries – at Drake is Marty Richter, Tom Ostrom, Brent Cruz, Nick Norton, Director of Player Development, Cavell Witter, Chief of Operations, Garrett Sturtz, Graduate Manager. Uh, oh, Ostrom and Richter were both assistant coaches. So, you know, uh, it's hard to say. If you're looking for uh, Darian DeVries on X, by the way, it's Coach underscore DeVries. Good info. Um, I, when Jacob says alumni, I'm thinking past alumni, like the KJs, the Deshaun Butlers, the Pittsburghs, right. the Gansies. That may be what he meant. Look at those guys. I, I would assume he'll let those guys come back. If not, it'd be a huge mistake. Uh, that was one of the things that really, I think, made the program so special. I mean, hugs, hugs let the old alumni. They they were able to. I mean, he gave him he gave him their own dressing room. They built an entire locker football room too, just for the alumni. You know, so hopefully that locker remains, room football. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I hope that that remains the case. I, I don't see why it wouldn't. But again, I don't know this. I don't know much about him yet. We're still learning, but we'll see. John, you're right. They aren't. Big Twelve is definitely underperforming in the Big Dance. Uh. Roy, I, I think Paul kind of just answered that, but we'll you know talk about it again. We don't really know yet. I mean, I would I would imagine he'll do everything he can to try to at least get Kerr to stay. Having a point guard that can shoot the ball like Kerr is invaluable. Um, as far as the rest of them, I have no idea. Like I said, who would fit in it? I think I think Slaz would fit into what he does offensively. I don't know about defensively. Speaking of that, Paul. Yeah, you've you've watched more Drake basketball than I have. What do they look like on the well, defensive end? What kind of scheme? Zone pack man. Line def- they run pack, pack line, line defense. Okay. Yeah. So, but I think that's probably because of the type of players he had at Drake. Mm-hmm. I, I think that might change. We'll see. Um, pack line defense is going to work in the Big Twelve very well, guys. You know, it can work. Um, but it's going. <laughs> It's it's the not the best option in this day and age, you know. So we'll see we'll see what they do. Yeah. I'm, uh, Thanks, Curtis. Yeah, he's renting. I'm I was trying to look that up on Ken Palm, and I, I'm you have to pay to be a member of Ken Palm, and I'm not a member, so I I wasn't able to find that number. So Curtis, thanks for sharing it, because I was going to find that same information because we know Rim Baker talked about that in his presser the other day. He wants a coach that's Plays good defense. Now, 72 doesn't set the world on fire, but it's not terrible either. I mean, it's there's over 300 teams in Division One college basketball, so 72 is still pretty good. And I don't know what his, what his right. numbers have been in years past either. Um, and, you know, Cole, you make a good point. Uh, Slash was not very good on the defensive end. Um, so that is a concern for sure. 
But Somebody I trust whatever the what? guy wants to do. Well, if he wants to clean house and get all new guys, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll accept it. If he wants to keep some of the guys, I'll accept it. I think it's important to have some guys back because you want guys that can help the other players understand the culture, understand how things are done, you know, that kind of stuff. Yep. I, I think it would be good to have a couple guys at least back. Uh, and, it, you know, it's hard to find – it's hard to go out and find 15 new players, <laughs> you know. And yes. I'll tell you something else too. West Virginia's got a really highly touted recruit looking at uh, looking at West Virginia for the 2025 class. His name has escaped me now. Uh, but I've seen not, it yesterday too. He's a top – I don't know if he's a top 100 or top 300 recruit, but he's he's up there. And he said he was going to see what happened with the coaching situation before he made his decision. Um, so I'll be interested to see. I'm sure that's going to be one of the freeze's first moves is to call this kid, try to get him. Right. Uh, Jasper Johnson. Thank you, Chase. That's who yeah, Jasper Johnson. Thank you, guys. People are asking what pack line defense is. All it is is the way I was taught. It's like a what we call a sagging type man-to-man defense where all you do is you pack the middle, prevent dribble penetration, protect the paint. Now, you know, I mean, that's that's pack line defense. Uh, in the Big 12, unfortunately, it's, it's really hard to play because the bigs are so good. You know, and, and you've yeah. got to have Oscar Sheenways to really play that effectively. Uh, or, or like, you know, to, to be honest, uh, Jesse Edwards would have been good in a pack line defense well, this they, year. They actually played it some this year. Uh, West Virginia yeah. did a few, a few yeah, games. They did. It, worked, it worked some, and some games it didn't. Uh, it, you got to have good protectors. It's good as long as you're playing a team that don't shoot the three well. If you if you play a team that shoots the three well, you're done. You're toast basically because you're not because you, you the whole purpose of the defense is to force teams to shoot threes. You know, so as long as teams aren't making shots, it work. It work. Right. It also helps rebounding because your guys, all of your guys, are packed closer to the basket, and they're there to collect rebounds. And West Virginia was struggling to rebound the ball, so they decided to put, play that pack line style defense for a few games. And like I said. It works some, not so much so. You get good three-point shooting teams, like you say, it's can be a nightmare. Yeah, I'd love to have it, McNeely it, back, uh, Josh. He says, do you think Virginia would fire Tony Bennett? I don't see that happening. No. no. If so, I would love for <laughs> McNeely to come to home to WVU. Yeah, I don't see it happening, no. uh, honestly. I mean, he just won well, a championship I, I, a few years ago, so. I brought this up because uh, there is a rumor. I, I looked. I just went on the Virginia board and read it last night that he's had a happy there and wants to leave, wants to leave. So uh, that's why I clicked on this. I know you okay. weren't privy to that, Coos, but I was not. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know anything else about it. This is on a message board, guys. Right. So I, you know, anytime I get something just off the message board and uh one of the media members isn't saying it or somebody that I that one of my sources isn't saying it, I'll let you know that. But there can be something a lot of times there's rumors going on and people, you know, a lot of times if there's a trend with something, it's something to at least pay attention to. So I'm just saying maybe, you know, because I do think there, you know, they there was a lot of people talking about it. Now keep in mind they won twenty four games this year. I think, you know, they probably thought they were a little better than they were. Uh, and they lost you know, early in the, in the tournament. So uh, McNeely would certainly be an incredible fit in Morgantown. Oh, my God. He would fit so well in what DeFreeze does, guys. It's almost too perfect of a fit for me to even want to believe it could happen. Talking about incredible, he'd be one of the, instantly one of the best players in the league. Right. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be like, what? I don't know if we can afford him. Yeah, I'm trying to find – apparently DeVries made a statement or an announcement, and I it's not on his Twitter account. Who's saying this? I don't – somebody in the chat. Um, I'm, hold on, I pulled up an article. It might be in this article. Here's a great article, by the way. Oh, here, 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 here it is. 
Here's what DeVries had to say about taking the job. He says, I'm honored to lead this historic program, which has an outstanding tradition and passionate fan base. Game days in the WU Coliseum are legendary, and the incredible support for Mountaineer basketball is known nationwide. I look forward to building on the success of the program. I would like to thank President Gee and Rim Baker for extending me this wonderful opportunity. My family and I are honored and thrilled to be a part of Mountaineer Nation. We have heard so many great things about West Virginia and its people, and we can't wait to get there. Pretty awesome. I like him. I look cordy, but I don't care about it. I'm so excited about this hire, guys. Like, I'm so excited about it. I, I really have a good feeling about this one. I, I do. I think if he sticks around, we've got a shot. Yeah, I do too. This guy here, man, we need to bring him on as a partner, don't we, Coos? Look <laughs> at this guy. Don't forget to like, sub, and shop Dutch Miller. And I saw somebody earlier, and I meant to bring it up on the screen and totally forgot. But somebody really early in the chat said they are driving a Dutch Miller car. That would have been cool. Oh, yeah, we did. We, we need to take a screenshot of that and send it to him. Yeah, anytime we can make him impressed, we try. <laughs> Sasquatch, thank you, man. Thank you for the continued Thanks, support. Man. 73% of his games he won at Drake. Jeff Ruff says when emphasized at the beginning of the coaching search that the Ren, I said when. Ren emphasized at the beginning of the coaching search that the hire would understand and represent the state. Well, I think this guy's going to try his best to do that, it sounds like. Uh, Ear Sports just put out an article on the Darien DeVries offense coups. Okay. I think it'd be really, they would love to hear this. Okay. I'm reading it. That's, I'm like, holy crap. Ear Sports. When you, when you look at what, yeah, it's uh, it says deep dive statistical analysis to understand the Darian DeVries offense. It's from Andrew Corbett, 91 minutes ago. Yeah, for some reason, it's I'm having internet issues here or something. It's not pulling up on my computer here. I don't know why. I'm trying again. Now. Okay. This is all data is taken from Kid Palm and Synergy. Those are both two good ones. Uh, what's the name of the article the title of the article deep dive statistical analysis to understand the dairy debris offense uh, okay I could read it if you don't I'm looking you forward it. I'm looking forward here Okay. Get to a couple questions while you're doing that. Yeah, go, go, yeah do that. <clears throat> right now, Cody, right now, uh, yesterday, like, I can't tell you, explain to you the urgency that uh, behind closed doors, there are people that are really like, this is really cutting it close. Uh, Louisville feels the same way. We're, you know, but there are teams in the tournament that are going to be behind the eight ball too. So we're not the only ones. The problem with that, those teams, the problem with us is those teams are having success and probably have good players coming back. We may have zero. Uh, it's very possible that we return zero players from this year's team. Some people think it's that's the way it's going to be. I don't think that's going to happen. I think I think we might it might be three or four though. It's going to be a brand new team, guys. I don't know how much success we're going to have in year one, but I think it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, but yeah, they're 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 recruiting as we speak. Most probably starting with the players on the Drake squad. Drake squad. Yeah, I found that article. Um, okay. You want me to do a screen share? Sure. This talks about the Drake offense, guys. Just to give you guys some context. I'm skipping the intro because it basically just talks about the stuff we've already talked about. But it says, uh, "That's cool." CBS is showing it on their on their uh, on the right hand side there. West Virginia hiring Darian DeVries as next head coach. Um, before breaking down how his offense operates, let's first lay the groundwork on how successful it's been overall because it's important to know what the end product is before breaking down its parts. Um, use a few key metrics, most notably points per possession and adjusted offensive efficiency. 
feels like a good time to say that all data is taken from Ken Palm and Synergy. The freeze has been the freeze has been at Drake for six seasons. Adjusted offensive efficiency rating has ranked anywhere from 189 to number 33, year. with a running average ranking of number 96. The Bulldogs ranked number 41 this season. For a school like Drake, those are impressive numbers. The raw per possession efficiency numbers are also really strong. This season, the Bulldogs scored 1,037 points. I'm sorry, 1.037 points per possession, which ranked in the 97th percentile in the country. Wow. Or in other words, about top 10. For reference, the most efficient offense in D1 by this metric was actually fellow MVC member Indiana State, who scored a whopping 1.093 points per possession. And Drake defeated the Sycamores twice this season, including in the MVC championship game. Uh, I don't want to read all this. Looks like it's going to be big. Uh, a lot of stuff here. Um, yeah, I just want to go over some points there. Yeah. So very, very efficient offensively. Scheme and trends. Uh, the personnel for a moment during the Reese likes to play small ball. Oh, my Lord. That's That makes me nervous. With one traditional post up big and four guards wings surrounding them. The average heart of his rotation has never been above six foot three and change. But we got to remember he's rec- he was recruiting in the Missouri Valley Conference, too. Which yeah, this is number, not going to be – Yeah, number two six in the country that, that season. Unless he switches his philosophy after making the jump, you're not going to see a two-big system. For his first season – and I, I don't know how many teams are still playing a two-big system anyway, though. Let's be honest. Well, most are running a – what you would consider a point forward – Right. Along with the traditional big, yeah, like a Quinn Slazinski and a Jesse Edwards, it's no different than what what we did this year, really. Now he did have a seven footer in Liam Robbins at one time, who eventually transferred to Minnesota and Vanderbilt, and was the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, pace of play has varied from year to year, but generally is pretty average. They ranked number ninety four in adjusted tempo during DeFries's first season in Des Moines, but that was the fastest it ever got. Shot That's great. Doesn't jump off the page either. Some teams are known for shooting a ton of threes. Maybe some for really taking a deep shot, but the freeze teams fall somewhere in the middle. I think that's good. 34% of Drake's shots the past three seasons have come with the rim, which ranked around number 295 in the country. Strengths, spot-up shooting. Cutting. Scoring at the rim and layups. Sounds like John Beeline offense. Right, uh, it's very similar. That's there you go. It's a good comparison. Scoring as a pick and roll ball handler. But, Lots of people yeah, that's the word modern in terms of a basketball offense to, to how much a team runs the pick and roll. Well, if you want a modern style of play, look no further. The freeze offensive offense has always utilized the pick and roll, and more importantly, it's been highly successful. I love that comment by Jeff Ruff right there. The freeze won't miss on the next Nick Neely. <laughs> That's a good point, Jeff. Hopefully not. Uh, he's good at ball security. Drake has ranked top 40 and lowest turnover rate in the country each of the last four seasons. Attacking man defense. I briefly mentioned it before, but DeFreeze knows how to attack man-on-man defense, which is important in an era of college basketball where zones are becoming less and less prevalent. Drake ranked, Drake ranked number five in the country in points per possession against man defense in 2023. That's interesting. Tied with UConn. Wow. The emphasis on cuts as well as the raw ability to tuck, of Tucker DeVries is a big factor here. Huh. Here's their weaknesses. Scoring against the press. For, for five of DeVries' six seasons, Drake has done well <laughs> scoring against the press defense. But this past year, for whatever reason, the Bulldogs really struggled here. Offensive well, rebounding. That's personnel related. My chink in the Sorry. armor for teams that run four out. The Bulldogs don't get a lot of second chance opportunities. Outside of a two-year stretch between 2020 and 2021, the freeze teams have been consistently poor offensive rebounding teams. But if you make enough shots, it don't matter. Right. Um, they're going to take a look at the defense next, which that will be in a different article. But great stuff there. Okay. Great job, Mr. Yeah. Corbett. That's the kind of article you'll see me up at 2 in the morning reading. Andrew Corbett. For sure. That's off to you, my man. Yeah. Great, great job writing that article. Really got deep into, into the nuts and bolts, which I know is right up Paul's alley. But it may not be for all of you, so I didn't want to get too deep. Uh, Joey says when Ren Baker said he was looking at defense, 
I didn't know he meant the 122nd defense in the country. Offense is great, but you need defense in the Big 12. Concerns me, but I trust Ren. Yeah, Joe, it's a little bit concerning. I agree with you, but I'm sure he did his homework on that. Uh, I'll, well, be interested to pers- read, I'll be interested to read Andrew's article on the defense next to see what he says. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's it's a lot of it has to do with personnel. You're direct. You have to run certain style of defense. And in the Missouri Valley Conference, offense can win games. Right. So I, I imagine there'll be some changes made in the Big 12. I, I almost for sure. I mean, Red wouldn't have brought him in without some kind of conversation about how defense is going to be successful. Uh, you know, so like you said, trust Red. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think you, you bring in good players. Schemes help. There are better schemes than others, uh, but players are where it's at. So if mm-hmm. we get good players, I won't worry about the rest of it. Good point. Um, he was asking – somebody asked about the offensive rebounding percentage. I don't, I'm not sure if it said the percentage. I'm going to look again. Uh, let's see. That's the wrong article. Let me, I'm trying to find the article again. What is it here, Linzel? Lytle, he won't make drastic improvements. He'll likely go to the program and fade away. He must be talking about something else. I'm, bit, I must be missing context here. You're not talking about DeFreeze, I don't think. All right, here's the offensive rebounding numbers. Outside of a two-year stretch between 2020 and 2021, DeFreeze teams have been a consistently poor offensive rebounding team. 2023's 24.1% offensive rebounding rate ranked number 315 in the country, which is near the bottom. But they, they, that's only one year. He, they, he didn't give the, the percentage for the other years. But, again, that's not their strength. Their strength is cutting to the basket and, and basically making shots. Uh, right. If you score it at, what did they say, what was the 97th percentile? Yeah. A lot of that is that you're not missing, you're just not missing a lot of shots. Like, you're going to just by that alone, that's going to cut a lot of your offensive rebounding yeah. down if you're making shots. It's the anti what Bob Huggins did. They're top Literally, twenty-five in the yeah top twenty-five in the nation in uh, points per possession on spot-up shooting. Look at Baylor this year, guys. Very similar numbers to what their offense looked like this year, and they had a really good basketball team. I mean, can we reasonably expect to be national title contenders? I'm not, you know, no, not yet. Uh, hopefully, we get there. But do I think we can be? With, with this guy who I, I do believe we can be 24 to 28 win team again. I do believe that. I think we can get back to that to where we're consistently being talked about in that five to five to two seated area. Maybe we'll get a one seat every now and then. And, and that's kind of what we've got to hope for, right? I mean, we, we can't be what we've never been consistently because we haven't been it yet. So, I have all the faith in the world in DeVries, and I think we're going to be really good uh, and really dangerous, you know, going forward. And let's see what it looks like this year, guys. See who we get in the portal. I, I do believe right, and DeVries is going to be a great start if we can get him. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's remember, guys, John Beeline's team wasn't up for rebounding either. That was their weakness, was rebounding. And I think that he did okay here at West Virginia, so. Uh, yeah, he, he had guards that rebounded. Remember right. that conversation? Mike Genzi. Yeah, that conversation you mentioned. Uh, it was about Ofri Nevay. Sasquatch said that Ofri will make drastic improvements, and Lizel disagreed with it. That was that was a gotcha. Joke. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Hey guys, we got two hundred and seventy-five of you in here right now. If you don't care, uh, just before you leave, or and I know you get asked in every YouTube video. But, you know, if you're happy about the DeFries, uh, DeFries. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If hit the like button you know for us. Hit the like. If you're happy and yeah, you know just, it, you, know, you really want to show it. Just click off. You know, hit the like. <laughs> hit the like. Whatever you got to do, man. Sorry, man. But, I, was, uh, I couldn't help myself. Uh, appreciate that, guys. Uh, when, when you said that, I couldn't help myself. Right. If you're happy and you know it, hit the like. Uh, let's see. Emphasis on a free throw percentage this year. Yeah, 
I think so. I mean, I think every coach puts an emphasis on that, to be honest. It's just some guys don't execute. Sorry. Any, no worries. Any new updates or anything before we uh, end this sucker? Not that I can see. Uh, that's what I was trying to check out here really quick. Let me, let me refresh one more time to make sure. Um, a lot of people posted, posted, not, you know, I'm, I'm bouncing back and forth between Google yeah. and uh, Twitter. Right. A lot of people posted that Tucker gone. <laughs> He's following dad. Yeah, that's good. So it's a good thing for us. Yep. It's, he might be he's going to be one of the most talented players we've had at West Virginia in a, in a while. Yeah, I, I really hope Kerr sticks around. I think he'd do well with this offense. Yeah, me too. I hope he sees that. Yeah. So, I'll tell you what, Red Baker has worked a miracle here, guys. Everybody, make sure you get Red Baker on that on on X or Facebook or wherever you got him, and and, and really express some thanks here because. This was not an easy hire, I don't feel like. Um, so there was some competition. Uh, and I do believe he got the second name on his list, personally. I think I think Dusty May was number one. But I, I do believe that, that Darian DeVries was his number two guy. Um, so, uh, you know, I think Red deserves all the credit for this. Um, he did it in a timely manner. Uh, under pressure, got this done when people were kind of bitching and griping about it not being done uh, and got this thing done quick, you know? So, and, and that includes with all the crazy stuff that happened with May last night. So, Rim Baker, man, we're lucky to have him, guys. Yeah, Roy says he's just happy to have a reason to be happy about WVU basketball. Uh, yep. Somebody asked, is Rim the best hiring in WVU history? I'm not going to go that far just yet. It's too early to, it's too early to be saying that, but he has the potential to be. If all the moves he's made, have, you know, especially especially if he's able to get us in a good spot from a conference standpoint or something like that, yeah. you know, that well, then we could definitely. It's kind um, of hard to beat Don Dillon. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, Daniel, I was, Daniel, I was actually going to bring that point up. He was able to go to Iowa. What, what, I mean, his, he could go to Iowa, watch the women's team play. And, oh, by the way, while I'm here, let's uh, – Let's go interview Darian DeVries, DeFreeze while we're here. I mean, it couldn't have worked out more perfectly, in my opinion. Oh, by the way, uh, another personal connection in all this is Brad Howe. Uh, Brad Howe apparently knows DeFreeze really well. I didn't um, know that. So it'll be interesting to see what he has to say great, about it. Yeah. Great, great uh, point, Paul. I, I, I had not even put that two, two and two together because he's from Iowa. Great point. Right. So they, they know each other. They've been doing it for a while. So I imagine this probably that probably helped in all this. Yeah. Joyce says every sport at WV was way up since Rian Becker took over, so he trusts them. Um, Thanks, got, Joey. Got a couple people from X on here. We got a Frank Frunky Frunky says, "Who do you think leaves the current team?" Most everyone, yeah, I think I, I think there'll be a couple of guys that hang around, but I, I look for the majority of the guys to leave, which is to be expected. I mean, they, you know, they signed up to play for certain guys, and those guys aren't here anymore. And uh, do you, know. you want the real? <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, we talked guys. about it earlier. I mean, I'm okay with whatever the coach decides to do. If he decides, or the players that matter, if they decide to clean house and bring in 15 entirely new guys, I'm cool with that. I don't, I, right. I don't want that to happen necessarily. I would like to see a couple guys stay, but uh, I, I'm, I'm going to let this truck. I'm going to let this coach cook, as they say, and uh, let him do his thing. What has been my theory about the guys that have been here for a few years? What have I told you in the past? Do you remember why they have stayed in West Virginia and not transferred? Money? I don't know. No, because they would have to go down. Right. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. guy, the guy, you know, you got, you look right. at guys like Josiah Harris. Um, I see what you're other saying. guys yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. I got you. The, in my opinion, the reason they haven't transferred is because they're going to have to go down. You know, um, I, uh, 
that I don't see them landing on another Big 12 squad. Uh, they're all good role players, but that's it, you know. Uh, proven this year, and and I hate to be harsh. I don't want to be harsh, but when it talk when you're talking about who to keep and who to get rid of, there's really only a couple players that make sense, you know. I I don't want to talk bad about these guys. It really hurts me to do so. So. But I, I believe for them to be best to ask them to move on and, and see if they can go somewhere else and play. Um, it just hasn't worked for Seth, for Josiah. Um, Kobe, really, he, he showed some improvement this year in Sonnen Subedic. Those would be guys I think we can consider keeping. Um, obviously, Kerr is a no-brainer. But, uh, you know, outside of that, I don't know, and all three. But uh, it's, they're tough decisions to be made. Personally, I think you could see any combination. Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned earlier, Kerr, as, as good as Curry is in the pick and roll, I think it'd be crazy not to try to keep him if you can. Or just as a shooter. Yeah, just yeah. as a, just as a threat on the floor. Um, in an offense like that, as a passer, I mean, there's just a lot to like about it. Yep. Yep. Well, uh, I don't really have anything else to say, Paul. Do you? I want. I want to stay out here. I, my my adrenaline's up, but uh, I'm excited about this, y'all. We'll be doing more videos on this. I will be at least, if, even if Coos can't, uh, uh, be looking out for videos on who co- who may be coming with. Probably have a Tucker DeVries video to be, is going to be made uh, on its own by itself. Talking about him as a player and speculating on that, be done not forced to do it. Um, uh, along with other players from the direct squad and other possible, just an all-out transfer video because there's a lot of transfers out there that WVU could be connected to. I actually did find. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do a screen share real quick. I keep finding these stuff that uh, Ethan Bach posted this an hour ago. It says this is WVAD Rim Baker's statement on Darren Devries. Coach DeVries is a phenomenal basketball coach and an even better person and possesses all the qualities we desired in the next leader of our men's basketball program. His teams play hard and smart and are efficient on both ends of the floor. He has proven to be a strong recruiter and developer of players, but even more importantly, a leader with integrity who develops character in the young men he coaches. So I wanted to, I wanted to, we hadn't read Ren's uh, statement yet, so I wanted to do that. Appreciate that. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> let's let's all get on uh, X and refresh, refresh, refresh for the next two days again. I I, I wish they would update us on a press conference. I assume that'll probably be coming on Tuesday or Monday, possibly. Probably won't be the day of the game. West Virginia has a history of trying to not conflict with other things like that. So, like you know, the day of the press conference most likely not going to be the same day the girls game, right? Right. Doesn't make sense for the university. Arguably the biggest game in the history of the women's program. Right. So, look, you know, once again, Vernon Bailey has been saying Tuesday or Wednesday the entire time (laughs) that this would be done. He has. Has he not? Yeah, he has. I mean, mean, he's been on this from the get, guys. If you're not subscribed to Rivals over there, them dudes stay on it. I'm not disparaging anybody else. But, man, I was really impressed with how they handled this specific search. Uh, and I have a lot of respect for what they do. Sorry, I'm done. Yeah, that's all right. That's cool. No, they deserve that. And and when you, you were trying to do it in the beginning when we had the, the audio issue. So, it yeah, was to do, it was good to do it again. Um, again, don't forget to go support Dutch Miller Automotive. I don't know how we lost our uh, – where did the logo go that we had up on the screen? Don't forget to support Dutch Miller Automotive. For your next next time you need a vehicle or service needs, if you're in the state of West Virginia, I guarantee you there's a place close to you. And then uh, they do have a few locations outside of West Virginia, so go to DutchMillerAuto.com see where they are. We have another super chat. I want to give a big thanks to Ear Val. Thank you for the $4.99 donation. Hello, ladies. Are there any comments? <laughs> Cole says, "Was well, so nice without the logo." Okay, I, he's paying us to put that logo up there. So, 
<laughs> kind of feel like we should, man. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Cole. Lizel says he ran over his dinner in a Dutch Miller automotive vehicle. We'll screenshot that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You're welcome, your Val. Yeah, we appreciate you. Uh, I know, I know, I know. Chris Miller's running for governor and all, and we're not on here to get political, but we're on here to promote the the car dealership that he owns. So, uh, anyway, hope he's paying double for that one. <laughs> but anyway, we appreciate everybody for hopping on here with us tonight. Uh, this was a fun one to do. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. Thanks to all who donated. Thanks to all who liked, commented, uh, subscribers. We appreciate you. Uh, yeah, jo I like I was Jojo too, Mike. Thumbs up. Yeah, I like Jojo too, Mike. I, I was going to disagree with Paul's comment earlier, but I didn't want to get into a debate with him. Well, but just on, real quick on the surface, it just depends on who you can bring in. Reserve right. much. There are better players right. out there. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm not arguing that. I just Jojo is one of those guys who's can, he's he's a little he's pretty good at everything. He's a good rebounder. He's a good shooter. He's not great. He's not great at every anything, but he's good at a lot of things. He can we can't be get that, off the air. Let's. He, he's got to be. People are like laughing that, at us. Oh, he's like that guy that uh, um, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Is that you know? It's kind of like, but he, he you need those guys on your team. You know. My dad said I need to give you more super chats. <laughs> well, tell your dad we appreciate that, Val. <laughs> we do. Well, anyway, I, are we finally done? I we're think we're done. done. People are laughing at us. We keep on uh, <laughs> coming done. back, coming we're back, done. coming back. Good night, y'all. Like, share, subscribe. Share the video if you can, man. Just click share. Share it somewhere to X or something for us, please. And I'm going to steal. I'm going to steal Tony Caridi's phrase. I don't think he has it copywritten, so I don't think I'll get sued. It's a great night to be a mountaineer, wherever you may be. We're finally done.